An ever-present impediment to peace in the Middle East is the conflict over who has the right to the land now called Israel and especially Jerusalem. The Palestinian Liberation Organization renounces any claim that the state of Israel makes to the land and tries to persuade world opinion that the Palestinian people have always had the rightful claim. Does history support the PLO's position? Does Islam have a special claim to Jerusalem? Sheikh Professor Abdul Hadai Palazzi, head of the Muslim community of Italy with the largest mosque in the world, considers these questions. Professor, both the Palestinians and the Jewish people claim a title to the land that is now called Israel. Who's correct? As, an, as a basic difference is that the Jewish people was ordered by God to settle in the land, while for other people there is no speci specific religious duty to live in a certain land. But another point that is interesting is that while the reality of the Jewish people is a known fact, the idea of the Palestinian people is something that was creating recently for political reasons. We easily admit the existence of an Arab people, but claiming that those Arabs who live inside the Israeli territory are Palestinians, and that they form a, sing a specific nationality is something that has no ethnic or historic basis, but just uh, is just based on recent politics. Even in my opinion, Arabs have the duty, have the right to live in Israel, but of course, just like in every case, a Muslim by, must abide by the local law. So uh, Arabs can have the right to live in Israel as long as they abide by the Israeli law, just like it happens to Arabs and Muslims who, who live in uh, whatever part of the world. You said that God gave the land to the Jewish people. Now, is this recorded in Jewish scripture or in Islamic scripture? According to both of them, because we have both in the Bible and in the Quran that when uh, the Jewish people was in exile in Egypt, it was freed from slavery in Egypt and asked to settle in, in the land of Israel. And it was the order coming by Moses, which was realized under Joshua. Uh, and there is no difference from this point of view from what is said in the Bible and what is said in the Quran. A chairman Arafat and a number of Islamic clerics, and you're an Islamic cleric, say that there is no historic evidence of the Jewish temple being in the area of the Temple Mount. Is that correct? This is one of the examples of, what, of the, how the um, PLO propaganda works. It is based on both historical and religious revisionism. As, uh, since claiming that there was no temple in uh, the area of Temple Mount of today is both against the Bible and against the Quran and against all that is declared in Quranic, uh, classic Quranic and notator and Muslim historians. Interestingly enough, there is one place inside the Haram, in the Temple Mount, which is called Makam Sulaiman. And according to the tradition, this is the name of the place where Solomon prayed toward the temple after completing the building. We have uh, in the commentary of Imam Tabari, which is a classic commentary of the Quran, an explanation according to which Imam Tabari quotes from the Prophet Muhammad explaining that the temple uh, of Solomon was built exactly in the same area where the two mosques uh, of Al-Aqsa and the Dome of the Rock stand today, and that's with this temple was destroyed and rebuilt twice. Uh, actually then, they are denying their own scripture, the Quran, when they make this claim. Of course, to support their uh, Palestinian ideology, at what uh, they claim that uh, the Moscow of Al-Aqsa is a national Palestinian sanctuary, as they say, they need to revise both the history of Islam and the basic sources of, of uh, Islam. This is because it is uh, clearly declared in Islamic sources that the sanctity of uh, the place depends on the fact that the Prophet Muhammad ascended uh, to heaven from the same place that was the direction of prayers of the Prophet of the children of Israel who were before him. 
how can the Palestinians agree to Jewish sovereignty, Israeli sovereignty over the city of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount in view of the fact that there are two Islamic mosques on the Temple Mount? A basic fact is that the sanctity of those mosques in the Quran started with the ascension to heaven of the Prophet Muhammad, which happened in a time when Jerusalem was under a Byzantine administration. And in that time, Jerusalem was a, a, a Christian city administrated by a bishop, was not under a Muslim sovereignty. And there exist many other mosques, and new mosques are built in Europe, in the United States, that are part of the territory of that state. But, and this creates no problem because when the government recognizes the basic right of a Muslim, when the government uh, grants uh, and protects their religious freedom, a mosque can, can work uh, and uh, perform all its uh, function for the community uh, independently from the government which is exercise sovereignty over the territory where the mosque is located. All right, the bottom line, which you're saying then, is that there is really no such thing as a Palestinian people. I say that there is an Arab people, and this, this Arab people lives in many different geographic areas. And in that case, for political reason, Palestine was originally the name of a geographic area, which includes both West Palestine, that is today Israel, and East Palestine, that is today Jordan. But out of political consideration, it was introduced the idea of calling uh, Palest uh, Western Palestinians as Palest uh, Palestinian and Eastern Palestinian as Jordans. But originally, the word was intended uh, from a geographic point of view as everyone who lives in Palestine. So uh, a Jew who lives in Israel is Palestinian, an Arab who lives in Israel is Palestinian, and an Arab who lives in Jordan is Palestinian too. But today, because of political consideration, there was this creation of the idea of a, a Palestinian national identity, which is something completely artificial, to the point that the, uh, those who are considered Palestinian depend on the sovereignty of Israel. The inhabitants of Gaza were considered Egyptian before 1967. Uh, the inhabitants of um, West Bank were considered Jordans before 1967. As soon as Israel took control of that area, since they live in Israel, the, the, it is claimed that the uh, local Arab population uh, belongs to the so-called Palestinian people. But this has no base in reality and even no base in the feeling of the local Arab population.